fast. We went live almost instantly from the moment I pushed the button. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to connect. Those of you who aren't watching or are watching this after it's been live, watching the pre-recorded version, welcome. This is a live stream on the Auburn Medical Group YouTube channel. We talk about medical topics. I'm a medical doctor, Dr. Mark Vaughn of the Auburn Medical Group, and this is our channel. If you want to catch these live when they're happening, you need to be subscribed to the Auburn Medical Group channel on YouTube and then hit the little bell icon to enable notifications so you'll know when we go live. We already have people coming in, so I'll be speaking with people like Pamela from Indianapolis and Teresa saying hi and Ju Muke from, I don't know where she's from, but saying hello and good day and Galaxy Status saying hello. Pamela is saying the volume is very low. Let me see if I can help that. If anybody else has a problem with the volume, please a, a live project so uh, you're hearing it as it's happening as we're actually recording it it's going out live and we also have just me saying hello you may have seen the topic it's a scishow video that I, I would guess a lot of the people who watch this are probably also subscribed to scishow because it talks about medical topics quite a bit and we had a, uh, a hank green hosted scishow today which i especially enjoy military cadet saying hello and teresa saying the volume is better good we got that working thank you for the feedback that helps me uh, and, and thank you so much to those people who do help these, uh, especially Boo Boo Kitty and Lindsay Antwine who help through Patreon. Uh, thank you also to all of you who have participated in the uh, Kickstarter that we have for our web series. Uh, those of you who haven't looked at the Kickstarter yet, please look at it. The link's in the description already at the very top of it. Click on that to go to Kickstarter and see what that's all about. And we also have people greeting us from Chile in uh, in. El Espanol. Saludos y carinos de, 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 desde Chile. Yes, hello to you also. Placey, I left you a like. Good luck from one YouTuber to another. Oh, thank you, Placey. I appreciate that. Speaking of one YouTuber to another, many of you also, like myself, are fans of Dr. Paul Thomas, the pediatrician who has a great YouTube channel, very similar in a lot of ways to our YouTube channel. I actually got a text message from him today. Uh, he was complimenting me on my creativity, and he was going to take a look at our Kickstarter. I was quite excited about that. So, um, in fact, I even thought I haven't said this to him yet. I thought it'd be really cool if we could have him, if we if we made a full season of it, have him uh, appear as a guest on it. That would be so much fun. Maylane too says hi from NJ. I'm assuming that's New Jersey. Watching this from work, <laughs> watching it from work, and you like SciShow also? Yes. And Hank Green did this one today. I, well, I think it was today, maybe it was last night, but I, I watched it today called something about getting closer to real life tricorders, referring to the medical instrument that's used on the Star Trek movies and television programs. And Alicia, I see you also. Hello. Very uh, interesting that there was an X prize by Qualcomm for the development of, a, of an under five pound tricorder, medical tricorder that could diagnose uh, certain conditions in a human being without doing anything invasive. So it couldn't prick their skin uh, in order to get a blood sample. It had to be just uh, ways that it could get information from the outside or answering questionnaires. And what they found was that there were some devices that could actually diagnose certain conditions uh, within a reasonable uh, range of tolerance without having to get a blood sample you know, make you bleed to get the results. And so he went on to talk about something more than just a collection of medical diagnoses, but some patient coming in with a certain set of symptoms and wanting to find out what it is out of the enormity of possible explanations for what's causing their symptoms. And he said the computers kind of fall flat on that compared to medical doctors. Uh, they don't yet have the machine learning to a place where it's able to come up with the answer out of everything it could be. So doc, uh, doctors haven't been replaced by computers yet. But he said that if you combine medical doctors with certain algorithms that the computers can provide using the two together, that you can get the correct diagnosis. Well, he said every time, I, I would be hard have a hard time saying every, but pretty good using the two together. And I understand that because uh, doctors with the help of computers can actually be pretty good. Now, Pamela's saying, I need to check out Sideshow. She can't believe she's never stumbled across it since she obviously watches medical channels. Well, it's actually not medical. It's it's just science. Uh, they have another one called Sideshow Psych. It's about uh, psychological phenomena and science. That one's interesting also. 
And these shows are, like, I had the pleasure of attending a, uh, a little talk given by the producers and editors of SciShow. Um, I'm trying to think if Hank Green was in that. He was at some of the things that I attended at um, VidCon last year. But this one had other hosts, hosts, plural? Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of, of SciShow's host other than Hank Green. I think there's two of them. Try and remember who they are. Uh, the guy with the different colored hair <laughs> is one of them. And, and the other guy, sorry, I cannot remember their names. Uh, I guess I don't watch it often enough. And Caitlin Hoffmeister, their producer, and Siri, I can't remember her last name, one of the editors. And so they told us how it's done. They have a set of writers who have qualifications as writers and in the science field. And they look over their resumes and then they actually have them write a sample. I know this because I actually auditioned once by writing a, a sample on, on one of their little topics that they give you uh, on a science subject. And then once the uh, author pitches the idea and they at SciShow agree that'd be a good topic, and they write it, then their editors fact check it. And these are people who are familiar with science literature to the point that they're qualified to do the fact checking. So they do a pretty good job of getting trustworthy information out. So I, I wanna put out my public endorsement for SciShow, even though they never answer my emails or tweets or when I say that I'm going to be uh, doing a show on one of their shows, a topic. But, but I like them anyway, and, and I think it's good material, so that's why I share it with you guys. And I don't have a link in the description currently, because I'm only able to do one drink, one drink, one link at a time on a live production. But I'll, I'll get it in after the fact. I'll, I'll get on the computer and I'll put in a link to the SciShow episode so you guys can look at that. Uh, so I've been talking quite a bit here. Did you guys have comments or questions relating to the real-life tricorder, like on Star Trek, or computer algorithms for diagnosing? Um, he, he pointed out that... Th Things like WebMD and Google, although they can help when it's a specific diagnosis that the, the person's aiming toward, they really don't do that good of a job when it could be anything. You know, they, they can do it from the, is it or is it not this particular condition, not so well with what condition is it. You know, it's the, the reverse. Uh, they also found that they are very good at telling everybody who comes in with a headache that they have brain cancer, <laughs> which... Not all that aches in the head is brain cancer. Uh, we know that from kindergarten cop. Pamela Schramke. Oh, no, I'm not at a hospital. I'm at home. Um, we do the live broadcasts in the evening, live uh, streaming from home. Sometimes we do it from the office if it's during the day, but I'm an outpatient physician, not inpatient. So I, I don't do, do them from the hospital. I have done them from the hospital. Actually, it wasn't my hospital. It was a hospital my, my mom actually goes to. Uh, which is different from mine because of her insurance. But I'm really glad to have uh, the opportunity to do it from home. Now, Dr. Gwain says, what about crowdsourced diagnosis like CrowdMed? What is that? Is that where you just put it out there and other people that happen to be on this crowdsourcing say, I think it's such and such because my cousin had it and it was like this? Boy, I have heard the worst medical advice from that. Um, People who are not trained in medicine really, really are very limited on their repertoire of what a diagnosis is for something. I know that sounds terribly prideful, but oh, it's so true. Um, we, we do not see people who are not trained in medicine come up with good medical advice. Uh, you learned about it all on a podcast today. On Reply All? A podcast on Reply. I don't, I'm not familiar with Reply All. A uh, military cadet want to know if hospitals sow ear irrigation like you. Um, when I worked in the emergency department, I did ear irrigation, so I, I know that I did. Oh, doctors and patients. Doctors just practicing medicine on people they've never met before or done an exam on. What do we think of that, Dr. Gwaine? Uh Diane Kennedy. Hi, I watch you every Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize. I do not yet have a video posted for tomorrow, and tomorrow is Friday, so hopefully this will be a, such a great video that you are satisfied with having seen an Auburn Medical Group video to this week, uh, combined with uh, whatever it was we did earlier in the week, because I, I know we talked about some other topics. Uh, we did have an interesting case today, involved a skin tag on someone's buttocks, 
And uh, for whatever reason, the patient did not want to show that part of their body on a live video. Um, actually, it was the patient's first appointment in our office, too. That was interesting. I guess you can imagine him not wanting to show that to the whole world. Him or her. I'll try to be very generic in my description. Uh, clogged ears walk in tomorrow. Hey, you know, Pamela, that, that's a possibility. But if it happened tomorrow with no time to uh, edit it before it goes up, it would probably end up being a live, which some people don't like live procedures because, of course, the audio is not as good because the microphone points one direction and, and I'm switching back and forth, putting on the device to be able to look inside of the ears. I think it's kind of fun myself. Uh, Dr. Wayne thinks it sounds a little sketchy. Of course, what do we know of the qualifications of these so-called self-proclaimed doctors? Again, be suspicious of a doctor who goes online and says, yeah, I'm diagnosing whatever and doesn't meet you in person and doesn't take your vital signs and, and just gives out the free advice. Yeah, it might be legit, but um, here, here's the reason. If I were to do that and I get something wrong, and I were served with papers for a summons to uh, have a malpractice suit, I would be held to the same standard of care as a doctor who could order any test, MRI, CT, blood work. Um, and so if they thought, well, a doctor who would have done those things would have got the answer right, and you got it wrong, and you didn't do those things, or you gave advice without the option of getting those things um, and without doing a good faith exam on the patient, which can be over the internet actually, if it's, uh, for example, psychiatric or, hey, here's my rash, look at it. Uh, you, you are absolutely vulnerable to that. So I, I don't understand somebody being that cavalier with a medical license because these are not easy to get. I don't know if you've tried. A medical license, in, at least in the state of California, is not an easy thing to just come up with. And actually, I know it's not in any state because they all use the USMLE uh, examination uh, parts one, two, and three. So, uh, Dr. Green, yeah, telemedicine. Dr. Green asked about telemedicine. Telemedicine being where somebody says, yeah, this is my rash. What is it? And yeah, you can do a certain amount of that uh, because you can see it. You can do an examination. There are some things you can do without actually seeing the patient, although I'd say psychiatry, psychiatry you really should be seeing some facial expressions um, if you've never met the patient before, but it could be done. Okay, we had a question about the tricorder. How does the tricorder work? Does it suggest a diagnosis based on combination of symptoms or does it suggest a number of tests to follow up? Well, you can see the, the uh, SciShow video, but what he talked about were things that could count, uh, could measure vital signs, blood pressure and pulse and, and respirations. Um, I don't know, maybe you could stand it and it could check your weight, which reminds me of an app called How Deep Is This Hole? Or how much do I weigh? Dr. Gwain, done telemedicine with my doc before, but he's been treating me for years. No, that's Pamela who says that. Uh, but nervous to have a doc diagnosis me without ever seeing me. We understand. And Diane Kennedy, don't know. I, I would want to be diagnosed over the internet. And Pamela, I'm with you, Diane. Uh, there's some things we could. Some things. Uh, but... You know, I would not want to have a person with with chest pain wanting to know if they have a heart attack or a pulmonary embolism or a dissecting aortic aneurysm or not, and somehow be able to come up with that without any imaging, with just going based on their description of it, since all three of those can be described in the exact same words. Gallbladder attack, ulcer. I mean, these are all things that can cause the same pain in the chest, something stuck in your esophagus, esophageal rupture. You know, there's a number of things that can all overlap and be very, very serious. Notice, though, my little example there was kind of the, the, the pain most located in the core of the body. So that's kind of a place where you probably have most of the most serious things all coming together. But, yeah, it's one that's good for examples. Uh, again, if any of you have come on and you haven't, for some reason, heard me talk about the Kickstarter campaign. The link is in the description. I am going to be doing these commercials unashamedly until March 1st when the Kickstarter ends and putting the links on all the videos because it's something I'm very excited about and it's something that's going to tell people more about how medicine is practiced in our current time because there's stuff that's brand new that, that we're doing in our office. Uh, I know it's not brand new to everybody, but uh, just a couple of years old uh, overall. Diane wants to know, 
if she'd want to be diagnosed with it. No, she already said that. And then she asked, yes, can they check blood pressure? They, they can't check blood pressure. Well, this device would check your blood pressure, this uh, so-called tricorder, Pamela. Pamela says, I think minor issues. Like I had a sinus infection when I talked to my doc on the phone. One thing might, can be done over the phone, but major potential issues could be scary. And honestly, somebody can present with symptoms suggestive of sinus infection, and it's actually meningitis or uh, Pott's puffy tumor or, oh, what else, Dr. Gwaine, if you're still there, could we get that could be confused for sinusitis? Or how about um, that form of encephalitis that comes from the uh, amoeba that's in fresh water that gets in through the nose and goes up and is the reason that you only use distilled water for your nasal rinses, your sinus rinses, you know, all sorts of things that, uh, you know, even minor things, um, apparently minor things that mimic minor things sometimes aren't. And in, in most of the world, the outside of medicine world, people's attitude would be, eh, what are the chances? In medicine, um, the chances are enough that you know of a case that was reported where somebody's life was severely affected because it was that way. Negleria filari, is, is that the one I'm thinking of? The, um, it was actually an amoeba, a form of amoeba that, uh, I think that's it, that's in the fresh water. Pamela, uh, many lifetime were confident it was recurring, but yes, I understand. Yep, uh, Charlotte Case, had weight loss surgery in 2015, hopefully not over the internet. Uh, cold all the time, no one can tell me why. Well, let's crowdsource here. Also, since surgery, my sinuses are sever. I would talk to an online doctor. You, you can do that, you can. Um, yeah, uh, but you really should be talking to a doctor who knows you and who's been through the Pre and hopefully pre and post uh, bariatric surgery to do all the testing that needs to be done because you should be having annual testing include a complete comprehensive, complete comprehensive, excuse the redundancy, uh, a comprehensive metabolic panel, a complete metabolic panel, uh, iron studies, vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Um, there's probably some others on the, oh, TSH for, for the thyroid. These are all tests that should be checked. Oh, magnesium should be checked every year uh, after you've had your gastric bypass surgery to help direct the workup for the symptoms you're describing. Pamela says, is it common to be cold after weight loss surgery? I honestly have no idea. We do find that people with less body fat are more susceptible to getting cold. Not a huge mystery. Charlotte Case, yes, okay. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for your affirmative response. Speaking of affirmative responses, Gwen and I were talking today about uh, documenting affirmative consent, I believe it is, where yes means yes. Uh, freezing all the time, I lost 253 pounds. You probably got cold right around 138. That's probably where it happened. Diane Kennedy, for extreme nausea, I would let them give me something. I hate nausea. Pamela Schramke, congrats on the amazing weight loss. Yes. I, I am a remiss. Uh, that is an amazing weight loss, and that is an incredible good step toward good health, better health. We do find that there are risks to the bariatric surgery, that the cost of improving your health because of getting rid of the weight, uh, the benefit outweighs the cost, but there are costs oftentimes. Um, being cold all the time, that's certainly a possible explanation. Although, your being cold all the time may just be my all the time. Uh, <laughs> because I'm cold all the time too. Uh, and many people who are uh, real thin build, I know, are. You guys made me speechless. Who would have thought it happened? Okay, so uh, I'll try to get around to all the links in the description, which is just adding the SciShow one. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about not having something prepped for tomorrow. If we do happen to have a, just a wonderful case and I'm able to get it out live or edit it in no time, that'd be awesome. Thank you all. Until next time, Dr. Mark, Telling all of you to stay in good health.